Hello everybody, my name is Sarah and welcome back to Educating Adventures. Today I need a little bit of help because I'm thinking of an animal but I just can't remember what it is. The animal that I'm thinking of is as big as a hippopotamus, except this animal spends a lot of time resting on sea ice and it has giant teeth hanging out of its mouth. And I mean giant, three foot long teeth hanging out of its mouth. Hmm, well I'm wondering if anybody was maybe thinking that my critter could be a walrus. And I'm hoping that you were, because that's exactly what we're talking about today. Let's start exploring some incredible walrus facts. Walruses are a species of pinniped, and pinnipeds are a group of mammals that include walruses, seals, and sea lions. Now walruses are only found in the Arctic Circle, which is way up by the North Pole where it's very cold, and they live in the Atlantic Ocean, and they live in and around the Pacific Ocean. Now even though there's only one species, those two populations are separate from each other, so scientists have broken the species into two subspecies, the Atlantic walrus and the Pacific walrus. Walruses are the largest member of the pinniped group. Males are bigger than females, and Pacific walruses are bigger than Atlantic walruses. The largest male Pacific walruses can weigh about 4,000 pounds, which is roughly the same as a hippopotamus. Because walruses are related to other pinnipeds, the seals and sea lions, they have quite a few traits in common. All pinnipeds are semi-aquatic, which means they spend some time in water and some time on land. All pinnipeds are also breathing air using lungs, and they are much faster and more agile in the water thanks to the flippers that they have, which aren't so great at moving their heavy bodies around up on land. Walruses are typically using the water to travel and to hunt, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit, and they usually use coastlines and sea ice when they need to come up out of the water to rest. Also like other pinnipeds, walruses have a very thick layer of blubber on their body, which is a thick layer of fat that has a very important job. Blubber helps to keep walruses warm in that freezing Arctic climate. On a walrus, their blubber can be up to six inches thick, which happens to be about the same size as my head. So that's a very thick layer of blubber that does a great job keeping them warm. But to get this much blubber, they probably need to eat quite a lot. Seals, sea lions, and walruses are all carnivores. They're all meat eaters. Walruses specifically like to feed on things like clams, mussels, and other shelled mollusks, but they're not very picky. They'll also eat things like shrimp, and crabs, and sea cucumbers, and worms, and a whole bunch of other stuff. But they're usually eating food that's found along the ocean floor, and the way that they find their food is by sensing any of that movement using their whiskers. We give whiskers a very fancy science name. We call them vibrissae, and we call them vibrissae because it's their job to sense vibrations of any of their prey that might be moving around. Many of these prey items that walruses like to eat burrow into the ocean floor. So to expose them, walruses take their big flippers and they kind of whoosh the sand and mud out of the way. They stir it all up to expose their prey. But as they do this, all of that sand and mud goes up into the water, and so does something that's been trapped in that sand and mud, nutrients. And as that nutrients enters the water, it becomes very important for something like algae, specifically a type of algae called phytoplankton. Algae uses the nutrients that was released into the water by the walruses to grow and survive. And now that algae, that phytoplankton, is very important because phytoplankton is thought to produce about 50%, about half of the oxygen in the air that we breathe, and it's the foundation of 
basically the entire ocean food web. If we did not have phytoplankton for little animals to feed on, then there'd be no little animals for the big animals to feed on, and so on and so forth. Scientists actually think that walruses are so important in mixing all of these nutrients up into the water that if we didn't have walruses, the entire ecosystem could collapse. And when we have an animal like a walrus that is so important that without them, the ecosystem would collapse, we call them a keystone species. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get back to some of those walrus traits that we started discussing before. Unlike other pinnipeds, walruses are the only pinniped that has tusks. Both males and females have tusks, and tusks are just overgrown teeth, right? That kind of hang out of their mouth. Now, the male tusks tend to be bigger than the female tusks, and on a male, they can reach three feet or one meter in length. There's a lot of different jobs that tusks have, but before I tell you about all of the jobs, I want to give you a moment to pause the video and brainstorm. What do you think that a walrus uses its tusks for? All right, let's talk about it. I'm wondering if any of the ideas that you have line up with the five ideas that I have. Walruses use their tusks for lots of different things. Male walruses especially use their tusks to show dominance. The larger, the longer their tusks are, the bigger and stronger they're going to appear to the group and they're going to be more dominant. Kind of rolled into that is my second point, which is for the males that have very long tusks who appear very dominant, that's going to help them attract a mate, right? The bigger and stronger they are, the more attractive they're going to be to a female. Both males and females will use their tusks to pull themselves out of the water up onto sea ice. Remember we said that some walruses can weigh 4,000 pounds? That's a lot of weight to get out of the water up onto the slippery sea ice. Speaking of sea ice, Walruses need to be able to get into the water and out of the water, right? They need to be able to go in to feed, they need to be able to come up to breathe and to rest. And oftentimes when we have these huge ice sheets, walruses rely on a hole in the ice sheet to be able to get in and out. They use their tusks to scrape the edges of those holes to keep the holes in the ice sheets open so they can get in and out. And lastly, and I'm wondering if some of you guys were thinking this too, they're used for defense. There are predators around where walruses live, and if they ever were threatened with a predator, they've kind of got a weapon attached to their face, right? So those tusks are very important for defense as well. Speaking of those predators, let's take a moment to talk about who actually would try to eat a walrus, because there's not very many. We said before walruses are gigantic, they have tusks, a weapon hanging out of their face, and sometimes walruses hang out in groups, enormous groups, sometimes of hundreds of thousands of individual walruses. It can be pretty hard to sneak up on a walrus when they're in a group that big. Pretty much the only animals that would try to eat a walrus are a polar bear and an orca. But they're typically going for the old and weak, or the young, or the sick, something other than a 4,000 pound healthy adult male. So we do know that walruses have some predators, but unfortunately, the biggest threat to walruses is not predators, it's people. Like many other Arctic animals, the biggest threat that walruses face is climate change. Climate change is the slow change of weather patterns all around the world. And different ecosystems experience climate change differently, but in the Arctic, it's getting warmer. And that sea ice, the pattern of it forming and melting, is especially important for walruses. Without that sea ice forming in the winter, they don't have the ability to go hunting out there or rest out there on the sea ice. They're losing a lot of space that they really need. The other threat that walruses have is hunting. People who live way up in the northern parts of the world hunt walruses for meat, for blubber, and sometimes for their tusks as well. 
Luckily, lots of different countries are putting laws in place to protect walruses from those hunters. But remember, the biggest threat to walruses is climate change. And we can do our part, even way far away from where walruses live, to stop climate change. We can do things like use renewable energy or write to your local government to make a switch to renewable energy. We can use less energy, right? Burn less fossil fuels, create less greenhouse gases. And if you would like to explore climate change a little bit further, and of course the ways that we can help, please be sure to visit our greenhouse gases adventure to learn even more. All right, you guys, thank you so, so much for joining me today to learn all about walruses. If you would like to learn more about walruses, the threats they face, the adaptations they have, if you'd like to do quizzes, activities, projects, and so much more, please feel free to visit that link below to check out our website, and I cannot wait to see you at our next adventure. Thank you very much.